Hello everybody. So today I want to take a look at what we call a counting loop. That is a loop that's designed to run a set number of times. Previously we looked at a conditional loop and those run an indefinite number of times until that condition is no longer met. But with a counting loop we always know that hey there's a certain specific number of times. And that creates a couple of really unique circumstances that might make it a little bit easier for us to use. Now, what's interesting is I can use a conditional loop anywhere I can use a counting loop, but not necessarily the other way around. So let's see how a counting loop can be easier to use, even in something like pseudocode. Let's take a look in our pseudocode and all I have right now to start off with is a start and an end. And I'm going to do something really, really simple. Just count to 10. And that's just to kind of show how we would do this. But this could be any number I want and it could be for anything or purpose I want. For example, counting the number of students I have and displaying their names one by one or counting up the average that I might get from those said students based upon their individual averages. So I can get a class average. I've gone down here and created just a little blank line. Once again, logical separation. And I'm gonna say something like for counter equals one, two, 10. Now this isn't like a programming language. They do have for loops and they often use that as a counting loop. It does not have to be like this though. Now, counter is a special variable. It's being defined as part of our for loop. It's only used inside of our for loop, and it's going to start at 1 and go up to 10. By default, we're going to assume that we increment by 1. If we want to increment by a different number, we'll say something like increment by 2. Okay? Or we could say by 5, or whatever number we want to be. And obviously I can also replace that one and 10 with a variable. So I can get a starting and ending number if I need to. Let's come over here, say four counter equals one inside of our four body. I'm just gonna say print counter. And this is just gonna print out my counter for me. So what's the current value? So when we start, we start at one. Okay, print the counter. All right, we increment by two. That means that counter is now three. So we print three. Let me increment it by two again, which is five. Five is still within the one to 10 range. We print out five, seven, nine, and then we get to 11. And we say, okay, well, wait a second. It's outside that range. I'm not going to do my four body anymore. And I exit out of that loop. Now, regardless of how I increment or what my starting and ending numbers might be, this is guaranteed going to happen. And if I go and run the same loop again with the same values, especially the hard code like that, I'm going to get the exact same values. Now, obviously, if I have a variable and I get user input for my starting and ending number, then I'll get a different value. Can I do other things besides print out my counter? Of course I can. I can do things like, like I said, calculate an average. I have to calculate a total number and then divide it by the size of my loop. I can do other things, maybe call a defined process. You might say, well, wait a second, we have to talk about calling predefined processes. Well, that's a good thing that that's going to be our next subject. So if you like this video, you might want to stick around for that video on how do we call predefined processes. I look forward to seeing you there.